Hello, all you amazing people. Remember, you're always amazing because you clicked on a small YouTuber's video. Currently, I'm at 388 subscribers. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much. We're like, we're so close to 200 or 390. Oh my God, I'm still at 200, man. I, I, I don't know. We've been growing so fast. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, basically today's video is gonna be statistics. Uh, I can't say it, but you know, statistics are being tabulated. Yeah. Um, we're just gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna go over Shinobu. This is one of the first characters in a while that I've had to look up, like, because I thought I was missing something her entire kit. It feels exactly like Sayu and how it's like, well, what, what do we do with Sayu? She scales off so many things. So looking at this part, and it's like, oh, wow, look at Kuki. She's over here. 75% of Elemental Mastery, and then damage dealt is increased by 25% of Elemental Mastery. So basically, just telling you right now, go for a full EM build. It, I know it's gonna be really hard. Because, you know, EM artifacts are very hard to come by. It's hard to get EM sometimes, especially when you want it for a character. I know I farmed the Animo set for like two months just so I could get a full EM set. So that that did, uh, that was a very bad thing. Just saying right now, shh, I was thinking, you know, if you're going for raw damage, which really Kuki's not a raw damage person, she just doesn't. She doesn't output as much damage. Um, it's more of reactions with her, from what I've gathered. Basically, overload reactions are what you want to do with uh, Kuki, and then you can do taser comps also. So you want EM. So you don't really want to go for her damage, you want to go for reaction damage. So you're looking at Iron Sting. If you're looking for more support, you can go for Favonius Sword. It's just, it's up to you, but those are the really the only two good ones. If you do have the Freedom Swarm, that is her best in slots compared to all of these, but I would say go for the Iron Sting, or if you're looking for more energy, go for Philponius Sword. I, I mean, there's actually just nothing, because if you get C2, I believe, um, basically her cooldown is non-existent, so you don't really need to try and cast your E-Skill cooldown. By the way, her burst is one of the weakest in the game, and I kind of realized that after my first initial impressions and i was like wow this burst really sucks i'm doing like damage calculations with it and it's doing like only 100k damage for reference my ayaka who yeah she's using a five star sword and she's got decent artifacts she's not like let me go over here she's not the best built 55 38 come over to ito and then he's over here with 47 87 and that is kind of a big deal like i feel like my ayaka isn't that mm, much built and i mean you can't exactly buff kuki's burst other than with kazua which yeah sure but that's a mega buff that you're just trying to carry with kuki it's just that's not what kuki's meant for she's meant for a support role i get it if you want to run her as a main dps but i'm just recommending everybody run her as a support role just because healing while it's one of the worst abilities in the game in my opinion, it is still an ability that can keep you alive in some cases. For talent priority, I would just say level up your e-skill and honestly, then just level up this. You don't really need to level up her basic attacks. And I would say for artifact set, you're looking at Noblesse or Tenacity of the Millith. Uh, I was gonna try and go for this, the emblem, but that just turned out not to be that good. It's just like, once again, you're not using her for her burst damage because it's actually so weak. Uh, it's just uh, this is like one of the weirdest characters I've ever had to try and build that ocean hued clam set would be good also however not really um you would think but like she doesn't heal enough compared to every other healer in the game she's kind of weak when it comes to healing it's not like oh hey you're getting some huge massive amounts of healing from Kuki um Barbara, she heals your entire team with a Q, and then this set will just max out. And then it only appears for three seconds, meaning you're only gonna ever get two hits out of this. Meaning you're not gonna get this maximum 30,000 HP, really. You're gonna get, I think, 5,000-ish when you heal, so it's nowhere near good. So I would say just stay away from that and just do Tenacity of the Millith or Noblesse Obliged. Noblesse Obliged will be the better one, however, it's just up to you, honestly. This will squeeze out a little bit more damage out of your burst, and then 20% attack for 12 seconds. However, this Tenacity of the Millilith will always have the attack buff, so whether, well, I say always, it'll practically always have the attack buff, because if you have a C2, 
Kuki. The duration is the same as the cooldown, basically. So right here, it the duration is the same as the cooldown, and the cooldown is 15 seconds, whereas the duration of the attack buff is 12 seconds. I feel like if you have a C2 Kuki, um, this set might end up being better. However, this set, it'll be easier to use. You'll get a little bit more burst damage. I'm talking a little bit, like, like 100 extra burst damage in total. It's <laughs> like, it is very small. Um, but so it's whatever set you really want to use to be honest uh, The noblesse is just slightly better for those people who care about min maxing everything Now basically you can't really do anything with your flower or feather So then we go to the sands and honestly the sands guaranteed elemental mastery put elemental mastery on Because when you're doing overload reactions, it's gonna do a lot more damage than what Kuki's actually able to do sadly um but now it comes debatable because the damage is kind of close you can either go for both sets being em and if you can get a decent crit rate crit damage ratio then honestly that'll be better but the chances that you're able to get a good crit rate crit damage ratio with both of these guys being em like that that's just not that's not realistic so you could do a full em build you could have a full like crit rate crit damage ratio like a 50% crit rate 100% crit damage and at that point you're probably better with a full em build however you're gonna want to go for electro damage bonus most likely and then the crit rate or crit damage whatever you end up needing more kooky sadly um they undertuned her scaling basically i just i think they massively undertuned her scaling with 40 percent max hp really that's well i'm sorry this is a level one skill sorry i was looking at that and i was like oh my god that's awful no but level one skill it's not that bad i think it's around 60 percent when she's actually maxed out it, that's just not good enough it, it really isn't when you're talking about a character who has 32,000 hp like put this into perspective 60 percent of 32,000. if you go for a full hp build which you can do if you're going for more healing um i'll just say that you can do that if you're going for more healing it isn't that much more healing and honestly she isn't that good of a healer I would just recommend going full EM. It is very sad to see because I was really hyped for Kuki and then they told me that she was going to be healer and my reaction was just... Kuki Shinobu is a support character who wields- WHY?! <laughs> Hopefully she's a good sport. ...wields a sword I wanted and to be uses amazing, her yes. electro vision to both heal team- <laughs> WHY?! <laughs> healing why you can tell my reaction when they made kuki a healer uh, and how disappointed i was because they tend to make healers really bad because they think healing is a good ability in this game i it's not a good ability when you get one shot just saying um but yeah kuki sadly undertoned so kuki sadly she's just severely worse and honestly i mean this this constellation right here, I have not seen anybody with a C4 Kuki, so I don't know the reactions and how good it is, but it says this effect can only occur once every 5 seconds, so I don't imagine it's going to impact reactions too much if it does at all. Um, I'm not, and honestly, it's C4 Kuki. She did just come out, which I do like to judge every 4 star at C6, basically, but I mean, Kuki, even her constellations, they're not even that good um it's just it's really bad for her and it, it, it's sad to see when we have characters like eula and ayaka which i get that are five stars but ayaka's doing six hundred thousand damage every single hit and then eula can easily do over a million if you have her signature weapon it's really sad and then we have some of the more recent four stars and they're like oh yeah goro's amazing yunjin's amazing kujo sara's amazing and then we get kuki and it's just like wow she really got she really got the short end of the stick I get that Dendro might be coming out and she might actually be pretty good for that, but I just... Releasing her in today's game state, it's like Kokomi. They released her without her artifact set. Why? Why couldn't you have just done the domain and then updated it later with Ito set? That, that was the easiest thing to do, but they didn't do it. And I, I just don't understand why they didn't. Okay, most of my rambling probably got cut there because I just, I really did not like, I... We have been, I've been recording for 20 minutes and most of this has just been me crapping on Kuki's design because wow, they really did her this dirty. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Um, hopefully I didn't forget anything, but yeah, that's going to be it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Yeah.